for every pain that we have, Lord God. Lead us back to you. Lead us back to the cross, Lord God. Help us find that way, that way of escape, Lord, back to you so that we can find that comfort, Lord God, of your embrace. And, Lord, we just thank you this morning, God, for your spirit that you have blessed us with in this place. Prepare us, Lord God, to be a sanctuary for you, a vessel meet for the Lord's service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in our hearts, Lord. There's never a time we don't need a move of your spirit in our hearts. Amen. Lord God, to be a sanctuary for your spirit to dwell, Lord God. Hallelujah. We just thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just feel like something good is about ready to happen. Amen. I can sense it in the spirit world. Amen. The Lord is preparing to do a great move. Amen. I'm believing it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you'll open up your Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to start in verse 10. We welcome those who may be uh, watching uh, over internet this morning. We just welcome you here this morning, and it's going to be page 1671 of your Expositor Study Bible. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 10. Does everybody have it? And the Bible reads, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, for him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them it is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have been closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. And we'll stop right there. And this morning I just want to minister a few minutes. God wants to speak to his people. God wants to speak to his people. Amen. We've got to get that this morning. God wants to speak to his people. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, we just thank you for your presence here this morning. And Father, as you anointed the worship service, I ask that you continue to anoint the preached word, Lord, and anoint the people and anoint the internet, Lord, and uh, anoint those, Lord. And Father, we're just asking that you give them ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to understand. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you care to. I had all intentions this week in continuing in 1 Corinthians and going through the study, but we had children's church yesterday, and Michelle did a wonderful job at ministering uh, the Word of God. And actually, this was the story that um, Michelle had given the children, and really uh, the Lord had her focus in about the four different types of ground, where there was the hard ground and the stony ground and the ground that had thorns and then the good ground to where the seeds fell. Amen. And and she went through the entire story about the parable of the sower. But when she got to these scriptures, amen, and was reading through them yesterday, amen, I felt, I sensed the presence of the Lord come all over me behind the computer desk back there, amen. And I knew the Lord, he spoke it to my heart, amen. He laid it on my heart, he spoke it to my spirit, however you want to put it, amen. And I knew the right away the Holy Spirit was telling me that he wanted to relay to his people that he wants to speak to them. He wants to walk with them. He wants to talk with them, amen. And by grace, church, we can have that. Amen. Don't you know that you know that you know that the Lord God Almighty wants to speak to you and me? Amen. Well, why would he ever want to speak to me? Because he sent his son to die for you, paid your sin debt, broke the power of sin for you. And not only that, so you could have an open line of communication with him once again. Because when Adam and Eve fell, 
Amen. They fell from God consciousness to self consciousness. Amen. And man is spiritually dead. But because of what Christ has done at the cross. Amen. And shedding his blood. It has made a bridge back to the Lord. Amen. To where we can go to him. To we can walk with him. We can talk with him. And not only that. He will talk back with us. Don't you know the one that said let there be life. We'll talk with you. God wants to speak to his people this morning. Amen. And the Lord is always looking to see if any will seek him, if any will truly look for him, if people will just truly want to walk with and talk with him. We see that, first of all. I want to show you this. Psalms chapter 14, verse 2. This is a beautiful picture here that we see of how the Lord longs to want to talk with his people. Psalms chapter 14. Verse 2. The Bible reads in Psalms chapter 14, verse 2. It says, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any who did understand and seek God. And I like uh, Brother Swaggart's notes on this. It says, During the Great Tribulation, due to the fact that the church has been raptured away, there will be not many on earth living for God, at least according to the entirety of the population. The word looked means literally to bow himself over to get a better and closer examination of men and their wicked ways. We see here that the Lord at times will even look, and the word look means bow over from his throne and take a closer look to see if there is any at all that will place their faith in him and seek him and want to walk with him and want to talk with him. Amen. My Lord, you have a heavenly father. I said, you have a heavenly father, amen. He just doesn't sit up in heaven on his throne and not know you, but he knows every hair on your head, amen. And not only that, he will look down off of his throne at times upon you and see if you are seeking him, if you will just walk and talk with him. You have a God that is interested in your life and what you're doing, and he wants to talk with you. His son paid the price so you could have an open line of communication with him. Where you could go boldly into his throne room of grace and not fearing that he will strike you down. See, in the old covenant, if you went into the holy of holies, you were struck dead. But because of what Christ has done, you don't have to fear of going boldly into the throne room of grace. We see a perfect picture of that in the story of Esther in the Old Testament, where she walked into the palace, amen, where the king's throne was. And unannounced, she was not allowed to go in there or else she would be executed on the spot, amen, unless the king put down his scepter. Guess what? You can go to your heavenly place father into the holy of holies amen into the throne room of grace and every single time he will put down the scepter and say let him come forth and let him speak with me because christ has paid the price he wants to talk with you he wants to walk with you amen we see in psalms 119 Verse 2. It says, Blessed are they who keep his testimonies and who seek him with the whole heart. Amen. The testimonies is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Blessed are you who place your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
and seek the Lord with your whole heart. And guess what? If you seek him with your whole heart, he will answer you. I said, if you seek him with your whole heart, he will answer. There's not one time, amen, where I haven't sought him with my whole heart and he didn't answer. Amen. Oh, there's been times I've sought him halfway <laughs> and he didn't answer. But when it came to with all my body, soul, my heart, everything about me just saying, Lord, I need an answer from you. He answered every single time. And there was not one time he did not answer. Now, again, the scripture says with a whole heart. Amen. See, we can fool men, but we can't fool God. Amen. We can fool men by going to the altar and kneeling down and may even being emotional and shed a few tears, but our heart's not in it, seeking him. Amen. But when you're truly broken and have a broken and contrite spirit and you seek him with everything about you, God will answer. I said, God will answer. Do you understand? Let me say that again. God will answer. He longs to speak to his people. We've seen in the book of Psalms already, there, at times he will, even during, think of this, even during the great tribulation as he pours out his wrath, the Bible says in Psalms that he even looks down to take a closer look at men to see if there are any who understand and who will seek him. And that's the key there, seeking him with your whole heart. Not a half a heart. Not a divided heart. Not a murmuring and complaining. <laughs> Amen. And there's many out in the world that, well, Brother Brad, uh, I tried and you know, disaster came my way, and I cried out to God, but he didn't answer, so. Well, if we see in Proverbs, chapter 1, we see the reason why to those who may be unsaved or not wanting nothing to do with the Lord at all, but then all of a sudden when disaster strikes, then they're, crying out to God, wanting him to fix everything. But we see here in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, the Lord says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit onto you. I will make known my words unto you. But look at this in starting in verse 24. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have set it not all my counsels and would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fears come. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early but they shall not find me. For that they hate knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of their fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. We see here the Lord is interested in a personal relationship, one who wants to follow God, one who wants to trust the Lord. And let me tell you, there are many out there who can't understand, well, I cried out to God, but why didn't he answer? Well, are you truly wanting to follow him? Amen.
I see out in the religious world and the world all the time, especially with the Internet now, we see and with social media, people will post all sorts of wicked sins, amen, and you may tell them about Jesus, you may tell them about the Lord, but they have nothing to do with it, and all they do is mock and make fun and say, and say that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo, it's not true, you guys are just fanatics. But then when great calamity comes in, all of a sudden it is, why, God, why? See, the Lord's not interested in religion. He's interested in a relationship and you following because of what he's given you. His son, Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And if you'll trust in that redemption plan, who is Jesus Christ and him shedding his blood, I can guarantee you every single time you seek him with a whole heart, he will answer. But if you refuse his reproofs, if you refuse his counsel, if you refuse to follow the Lord, the Bible says, well, then when your calamities come, Amen. No, that doesn't mean that God doesn't hear a sinner repenting, amen, because guess what? Every single sinner who's ever become born again, amen, decided that they wanted to follow the Lord. They were sick of the world's ways. They were sick of all the lies. They were sick of all the, the, the snares of the devil. And so with a broken and contrite heart, they got down on their knees, and with the whole heart they said, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want to be saved. Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. And guess what? That's a prayer God always answers because of a broken and contrite spirit wanting to follow Christ. Amen. But if you have no interest in the Lord, you can fool men, but you cannot fool God. Amen. And the word of God says, amen, if you refuse his counsels, if you refuse his way, if you refuse and want nothing to do with him, as Michelle taught the kids, you have the seed fell on hard ground and you just want nothing to do with Jesus at all. Well, then Proverbs, we see here that the Lord says, when your calamity comes, I will not answer it. When you try to seek me, you will not find me because you're not seeking me for who I am and what I've done. You're just seeking him for your own personal gain and could care less about God. And so we see here, the Bible is, there is stipulations when God answers and when he doesn't answer. Because the Bible is an ultimatum. You either follow the Lord or you follow your father, the devil. Let me say that again. You either follow your father, the Lord, our heavenly father. Or you don't follow him at all and you follow your father, the devil, who is the father of all lies. But if we place our faith in what his son has done at Calvary's cross and just love him for who he is and what he's done for us, amen, the Lord promises that if we seek him early, we will find him. And he will answer Every single time. Look at this in Proverbs. Let's continue on here in Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 17. Everybody have it. It says, I love them who love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. When we love, when we truly love the Lord for who he is and what he's done, he doesn't look at merits. Amen. He doesn't look at how holy and righteous you think you are. He just looks at simple faith and who loves him because of what his son has done, shedding his blood for you and me. 
And, it, the, and he promises here in his word that if we seek him, we shall find him. I can't get any more clear than that, that God wants to speak to his people. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, the Bible says, then I shall hear from heaven. Then shall I forgive their sins, and then shall I heal their land. God wants to speak. To his people, do you want to hear from heaven? Just follow the Lord by faith, believing in what his son has done at Calvary's cross, and just seek him early, and you will hear from heaven. Jeremiah in 29 verse 13. Again, we see here in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, he says, And you shall seek me and find me. Now look at the conditions here. When you shall search for me with all of your heart. Everybody say all. All of your heart. When you really want an answer from God, you'll search with all your heart. You'll seek him with all your heart, and guess what? You'll find him. You'll find an answer. You'll find a God who will speak back to you. Do you understand that this morning? Somebody's got to get this. Somebody has to understand this this morning. Whether here or on internet, God didn't give this message for nothing, amen. He wants you to know that he wants to speak with you. He wants to talk with you. You don't have to go to a psychiatrist. You can go to God, the Father Almighty, and speak with Him. You can go into His throne room. He won't charge you $300 an hour like a psychiatrist would. <laughs> he won't say, how does that make you feel? <laughs> He'll say, I have an answer for you. I have an answer for you. Just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. Amen. And by my grace, I'll see you through. But we see here in Jeremiah the conditions for him to answer. We have to search and seek for him with all our heart for an answer. And he will give it. And we have to understand three points here when we seek him with all of our heart. Amen. First of all, we see in Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. What are you saying, Brother Brad? First of all, you have to, by faith, be expecting him to answer. Do you understand that? Let me give you examples. For those who want to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and I'm just giving one example, when you ask him to fill you, you have to be expecting that he will. But if we have the heart attitude of, Lord, I want to be filled with the, or baptized with the Holy Spirit, well, he ain't going to give it to me. That's not faith. I said, that's not faith. Or, well, if he wants me to have it, then I'll, I'll start speaking in tongues. But until then, I'm just not believing that he's going to do it for me. 
That's not faith. The Lord expects us to receive it. Expects us to believe that he will answer. And guess what? If by faith you will ask him, and if by faith you will believe that he will answer, and if by faith you are expecting an answer, he will answer because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Because it says it's impossible to please him without faith. He's not going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit if you don't expect it. He will not go against your free will. Do you understand that this morning? That's the same way with anything. Yeah, I want to be saved, but God will never save me. You have to expect him to do what he promises to do. Amen. We have to expect it by faith. We have to believe that he will answer by faith. We have to believe that he will do what his word says he can do. Amen. I've had back problems for the last several weeks now because I pushed my hip out of place. Amen. And the chiropractor was able to get it back in place. Amen. But I'm still having back spasms if I sit for too long. And Michelle continually lays hands on me and prays for me. And if I'm having the heart attitude, well, God's not going to heal my back spasm. Well, no. I have to believe by faith. Well, why are you expecting it? Why are you believing that he can't? Because his son has paid for it in his own blood. And so I can expect to receive the promises of God by faith and believe for my total and complete healing. Expect it every single morning. When I get up to the day, I lay down my head, and if the Lord allows me and gives me a dream, I'll expect it in my dreams. <laughs> we have to expect and believe that God will do what he says he will do. And if we don't expect it by faith, well, then it'll never happen. Because God will never go against our own free will. Amen? Number two. Let's go to Romans chapter 2 verse 7. Everybody have it. Romans chapter 2, verse 7. It says, To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So here in Paul, uh, Paul in Romans chapter 2, he starts criticizing the Jews, amen, because they think they can, because of their ability of trying to keep the law, and Paul tells them, you're wrong. You guys are telling the Gentiles keep the law, and you yourself can't even keep the law. And he goes on criticizing the Jews about this, but then we see something beautiful here in verse 7, because he says, but to them who by patient continuance in well-doing, and that well-doing is talking about faith. Amen? Faith in Christ and Him crucified. So it says, to them who by patient continuance in faith, amen, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. We see here (laughs) that we have to expect by faith with patience. Amen. Just because you didn't get it today doesn't mean not to expect it tomorrow. Do you understand that? Let me say that again. In patient continuance with well-doing. Amen. That well-doing is talking about evidencing simple faith. Amen. 
See, we have the microwave mentality thinking that we pop it in the microwave and God's supposed to do it in the next 30 seconds or else he doesn't want us to have it. Do you understand that? But the Lord tells us with patient continuance, amen. There may be some of you here, you may be on camera. You may need a healing. You may need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You may have financial problems. You may have something going in your life. I'm not God, I don't know. But the Bible says that we need to just ask him of what we have need of whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical, or whether it be financial, amen. And we have to, by faith, expect that he will answer. And just because you don't get the answer at the time you want doesn't mean we need to quit, doesn't mean we need to give up. But he says with patient continuance and well-doing, and patient continuance, uh, continually praying, continually asking, continually seeking, continually knocking, amen, God will answer. Some of you may be, I'll just give another example, amen. See, the devil don't like it, amen, but that's okay. I said, the devil don't like it, that's okay, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> but with patience, see, just a little patience, the Lord will take care of it. <laughs> but the devil never stays away. <laughs> Hallelujah. But with patient continuance, the Bible says, amen, he will answer. I said he will answer. And we also see here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, amen, that if we don't get our answer today, we need to keep on seeking. We need to keep on knocking. We need to keep on asking, amen, because he will answer. Amen. And many will ask, well, Brother Brad, how will God answer what I've been asking for? Amen. Well, there are several ways the Lord can answer. First of all, number one is through his word. Amen. I said, first of all, one way God answers that, or he wants to talk with us, is through his word. Amen. So if you want to hear an answer from the Lord, you need to start reading the word. Amen. We need to dust off the old Bible, amen, and crack it open, amen, and start reading what the word of God has for us. It's our daily bread of Christ and him crucified. Amen. You want God to talk with you, read your Bible. Amen. Just because we're under grace doesn't mean that we throw away uh, consecration. Amen. You understand that? Let me say that again. Just because we're under grace doesn't mean we throw away consecration. Doesn't mean we throw away prayer. Doesn't mean we throw away a study in the Word. Doesn't mean we throw away church services. Well, I'm under grace and I don't need to do any of that stuff. That's not true. You want to hear from God, you need to open up the Word of God. Amen. And He will speak to you through His Word. That's why He put the Holy Spirit in you. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't understand what the Word of God is all about. But after you're born again and saved, open up your Bible. Before you start reading, just ask the Lord to show you what He has for you. And He'll start speaking to you through His Word. And the Holy Spirit will give you revelation and he will illuminate the word to your heart and give you your daily bread. Amen. Man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. And not only that, the Holy Spirit will bring those scriptures back to your remembrance. Amen. So when you're in a trial or a tribulation or something happens and you need an answer from the Lord, amen, and you start praying and saying, Lord, what am I supposed to do? He will bring the scriptures back to your remembrance. 
That's how he speaks to you, through his word. He will illuminate the word to you by his Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And not only that, the Holy Spirit will bring scriptures back to your remembrance. Amen. That's one way he speaks to us. It's through his word. Another way he speaks to us is through our prayer life. Amen. And I'll just plainly put it. No prayer life, no leadings and guidance. I'll say that again. No prayer life, no leadings and guidance. Little prayer, little guidance. No prayer, no guidance at all. Amen. But if you will have a prayer life, amen, if you consecrate yourself to have a strong prayer life, God will start leading you. God will start guiding you by his spirit. Amen. Do you understand that? Well, why would he do that? Because his son has already paid for it so you can have it. Amen. Do you understand that? And the Lord will start leading you by his spirit. And at times, many times, we'll see our answer unfold right before our eyes. We've seen it in this church. We had bought the lot, expecting and believing to put a building there. And the Lord didn't allow it to happen. Amen. And so what did we do? We went to prayer. Amen. And even in the meeting when we had everybody here, we said, we're just going to say, Lord, you do it. And just continue believing and expecting and praying and asking. And it seemed like we wasn't getting no answer, but that didn't make us quit. We continued expecting, we continued seeking, we continued knocking. And we watched everything unfold right before our own very eyes. Amen. Through the leading of the Spirit. The building being for sale. The previous owner dropping the price almost 10 grand. The previous owners saying we'll pay the closing cost. The bank telling you you're good. Amen. And we see it unfold step by step by step by step with the Lord leading. Amen. And just seeking him. And I don't even worry about the speakers, amen. Through prayer, it may be that small, still voice that speaks to your spirit. Amen. And tells you what you need to do. And that's how I was. And sometimes that small, still voice doesn't seem so small and still. When the Lord speaks. I can remember being saved only three months in 2007. And on the day before Thanksgiving. Lord what is it you want me to do? Lord what do you have planned for me? You know where where should I go? Where should I start? Amen. And the small still voice. Amen. Just as I was about ready to fall asleep. Spoke. Amen. And sometimes as I said that small still voice doesn't seem so small and still when God speaks. But he said preach the word. Or sometimes he will just lay something strongly on your heart. Amen. That's why we're here this morning. That's why this church is here this morning. When we started out our ministry, amen, the Lord laid Deshler strongly on my heart that they needed Christ and him crucified. And I would drive around this town before we ever started the church, amen, I'd, and I would see during the summertime, summertime with the, the bar door open and everybody sitting on the stools drinking and getting drunk, and I would be sitting there at the stoplight, amen, just looking in there weeping and saying, Lord, Lord, they need to understand. Lord, they need Christ. Lord, they're in bondage. Lord, get them out of there. 
and the light would turn green, and I'd go and drive down the road and come around and turn around and come back to the stoplight, amen, and look in there again and just say, Lord, give them Jesus. Lord, get them out of there. Lord, amen. I tried start, I tried thinking about saying, Lord, let's start a church in Finley, but the Lord kept strongly laying it on my heart about Deschler, Ohio. That's how he'll speak to you at times, where he'll lay it. On your heart, amen, and no matter how hard you try to get away from it or try something else, it always seems to come back to that. That's the Lord speaking to you. You may felt led to do something. He, you may hear that small, still voice speak to your spirit. Or he may just lay something on your heart so strong that you just can't get away from it until you do it. But that's the second way. The Lord will speak to you. And he will do all of these. Because his son has paid. I can't get this stress enough. His son has paid the price at Calvary's cross. And he will do all of this by grace. You don't have to merit or earn anything from God. The work's done. And he will speak to you. He'll speak to you through the word. He'll speak to you through prayer. And not only that. He'll speak to you through anointed church services. That's why you come to church, isn't it? To hear from the Lord. I don't think you come because you love my. <laughs> Not that great of a speaker. <laughs> but he'll speak to you through anointed church services. He'll speak to you through the worship service, amen, as the music and the singing is anointed and it ministers to your heart. Not only that, he will speak to you through the anointed preaching. And we need pastors and preachers and evangelists who are hearing from heaven. Amen. Do you understand that? We need pastors and preachers and evangelists who are hearing from heaven. Because only then is it going to be anointed. Amen. And it'll bless the people because they'll hear from God. And finally, through anointed church services, he'll speak to us through the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. He'll give you an answer through the gifts of the Spirit. If you need a healing, if you need a word of wisdom, if you need a word of knowledge, if you need edified and comforted through tongues and interpretation. He'll speak to his people through the gifts of the Spirit of all. This is how God will answer, through his word. Amen. Bringing scripture back to your remembrance and illuminating the word of God to your heart and life. That's why the Holy Spirit's there. Through prayer. And as you pray and seek his face, guess what? The Holy Spirit will start leading you. He'll start guiding you. And many a times you'll see God's answer unfold right before your own very eyes. It may be that small, still voice speaking to your spirit. Or he may just lay something heavily on your heart. And he'll speak to you through anointed church services. Through the anointed worship, through the anointed preaching, or through the gifts of the spirit operating within the service. But one way or another, God wants to speak to his people this morning. I said, God wants to speak to his people this morning. I said, God wants to speak to his people this morning. Amen. God wants to speak with you. You on internet, God wants to talk with you. He has something for you. What you've been asking him for, he has the answers for you. All you have to do is seek him. Expecting, believing by faith that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him because his son has already paid the price. Amen. And amen, would you stand? Okay. Um, as Michelle uh, sings this last song, could uh, Brother Kevin and Brother John get communion ready, please? We're going to take communion this morning to remember what Christ has done for us at Calvary's cross because it's that blood 
that was shed for you and me. That's the reason why God will, will speak with us. Amen. At one time we were spiritually dead, but when we were washed in the blood of the Lamb, amen, we were made spiritually alive once again. Amen. amen. Reconciled back to God, and he'll talk with you now because of that. Amen. 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 Go ahead and uh, uh, serve the communion, please. When he calls for me, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Yes, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name i'll be somewhere listening i'll be somewhere listening i'll be somewhere listening for my name hallelujah when he calls for me i will answer when he calls for me i will answer when he calls for me i will answer i'll be somewhere listening for my name hallelujah i'll be somewhere listening for my name praise praise the lord and at the last supper and those of you by internet as well um if you have a little uh a cracker or some unleavened bread and grape juice you take communion with us but at the last supper jesus he took bread um, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he told his disciples, this is my body broken for you. Go ahead and eat. He took the cup, and he gave thanks. He told his disciples, this is my blood shed for you. And he passed to the disciples, and they drank. Go ahead and drink. And he told them, do this in all in remembrance of my death until I come. And that's why we take communion, to remind us of where our faith is supposed to be. Not in the act of communion, but what it present, represents. The blood of Jesus Christ and that sacrifice on the cross. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that um, you sent your son 2,000 years ago. We thank you, Lord, that he was obedient and went to the cross. We thank you that he paid the penalty and broke the power of sin, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that you have a desire that you want to walk and talk with us, Lord. And Father, give us uh, ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to understand. And let us seek you, Lord, with all of our heart in these last days. And Father, we're believing by faith that you will answer. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless all of you, and we'll see you next service, 630. Amen.